Hey guys, my name is Enodark and today we'll take a look at everything that you need to create the legendary weapon, the Kratkin. The Kratkin is a trident with three moving eel heads that continuously spray bubbles. It surrounds the player by bubbles and scales, which also leave behind a trail while moving. To craft the Kratkin, you will need the following four components. Venom, which is the precursor, the gift of Kratkin, the gift of fortune and the gift of mastery. Each of these components, except for the precursor, are made up of components of their own, and the order in which you collect them is up to you. However, I do have a recommended order of doing things, which I will share later on in this video. So let's take a look at how you can collect each of the items required to create the four main parts of this legendary. Venom can be bought on the trading post, which at the time of this video is going for roughly 60 gold. It can also be earned through a series of collections that you can access via the achievements panel if you are interested in doing it that way. If you want to know whether doing the collection will be cheaper than buying it on the trading post, then you can visit gw2efficiency.com. Lastly, just like any of the first generation precursors in Guild Wars 2, the Venom can actually be dropped from enemies in the game. So make sure that you have completed the Advanced Logistics Mastery and that you tick all of the auto loot functions in the Options menu. If you do decide to buy it on the trading post and you have the patience to wait, then I recommend putting in a buy order to save some gold for the rest of the Legendary. Doing this can sometimes take a couple of days, so if you don't have the patience to wait or you urgently want your Legendary and you have the gold to spend, then you can go ahead and buy it at the selling price. The Gift of Kratkin is one of the more expensive parts of this legendary. It consists of the Gift of Energy, an Eel Statue, a hundred icy runestones and the Superior Sigil of Venom. To craft the Gift of Energy, you will need an Artificer at level 400. You will also have to buy the recipe for the Gift of Energy for 10 gold from Miani, who is next to the Mystic Forge in Lion's Arch. Once you've done this, you will need to combine 250 piles of Crystalline Dust, 250 piles of incandinate dust, 250 piles of luminous dust, and 250 piles of radiant dust. To craft the eel statue, you will need a tailor at level 400. You will also have to buy the recipe from Yoni for another 10 gold. Once you've done this, you will have to buy the gift of the forgeman from the dungeon's weapon and armor vendor for 500 manifestos of the Moletariat. The dungeon's weapon and armor vendor is just south of the Fort Mariner Waypoint in Lion's Arch, as you can see in this picture. To obtain the manifestos of the Moletariat, you will have to do the Sorrows Embrace dungeon multiple times, but you can also do the Sorrows Embrace dungeon reward track in either PvP or World vs World a few times. All of these options are good as they will reward you with additional gold and materials that you can use later on in the Legendary, so it's up to you to decide which of them you want to do. Combine the gift of the Forgeman with 250 armored scales, 250 cured hardened leather squares and 250 orichalcum ingots at the tailoring station to create the eel statue. The icy runestones are a part of the legendary that you unfortunately have to spend gold on. They cost 1 gold each and you need 100 of them, so it adds up to a total of 100 gold that you will need to spend. You can buy them from Rhodes and the Penitent in Frost Gorge Sound, who is northwest of the Earthshake Waypoint, as you can see in this picture. If the Jawmag event is running, then Rojan may not be there and you will have to wait for the event to end before he returns. The Superior Sigil of Venom can be obtained in many ways, but the quickest and easiest way would be to simply buy it on the trading post. So once you've obtained the Gift of Energy, the Eel Statue, the 100 Icy Runestones and the Superior Sigil of Venom, you can combine them in the Mystic Forge to create the Gift of Kratkin. The Gift of Fortune goes into all of the first generation legendary weapons in Guild Wars 2, and it's a very painful part of the process. It consists of 77 Misty Clovers, 250 Globs of Ectoplasm, a Gift of Might, and a Gift of Magic. To obtain the 77 Misty Clovers needed for the Gift of Fortune, you will need 10 Obsidian Shards, 10 Misty Coins, 10 Globs of Ectoplasms, and 10 Misty Crystals. Combine these in the Mystic Forge. This recipe will return an output of 10 Mystic Clovers, so when you get to 70 Mystic Clovers and you only need 7 more, swap out the Mystic Crystals for Philosopher's Stones. 
please note that this recipe only has an approximate 32% chance to return Mr. Clovers and can instead return a number of different materials including tier 6 materials which are needed for creating both the gift of might and the gift of magic. So it's important to obtain the Mystic Clovers before creating the Gift of Might and the Gift of Magic. Mystic Clovers can also be obtained in various other ways, such as PvP and World vs World reward tracks. So if you don't want to create them in the Mystic Forge with this recipe, then check the wiki for the other methods of obtaining them. The Gift of Might and the Gift of Magic are both made up of different tier 6 materials that will have to be combined in the Mystic Forge to create each of the respective gifts. The Gift of Might consists of 250 Vicious Fangs, 250 Armored Scales, 250 Vicious Claws and 250 Ancient Bones. The Gift of Magic consists of 250 Vials of Powerful Blood, 250 Powerful Venom Sacks, 250 Elaborate Totems and 250 Piles of Crystalline Dust. Once you've obtained the 77 Mystic Clovers, the 250 Globs of Ectoplasms, the Gift of Might and the Gift of Magic, you can combine them in the Mystic Forge to create the Gift of Fortune. The Gift of Mastery also goes into all of the first generation legendary weapons in Guild Wars 2, and it's a rather cheap part of the process. But it can be extremely time consuming as you will have to finish the world exploration to get the Gift of Exploration. This does not include the maps from the Heart of Thorns or the Path of Fire expansion packs. So once you've obtained the Venom, the Gift of Kraken, the Gift of Fortune and the Gift of Mastery, you can combine them in the Mystic Forge to create the Kraken. Creating legendary weapons can seem daunting and, like no matter how much you play, you will never be able to create them. But here is a list of my favorite farming locations to speed up the process. The Silver Wastes is still a great place to farm for materials and for gold, as there are always commanders on this map and you can run it multiple times a day without worrying about event timers. When you do the Silver Wastes, you will receive a lot of Obsidian Shards from opening the Lost Bandit Chests during the chest farm after killing the Vine Wrath. The Tangled Depths and Auric Basin map meta events are a great place to farm for resources, and they always happen directly after one another. Each of these will reward you with the option to choose an Amalgamated Gemstone as your reward once per day which can be sold on the trading post for a bit of extra gold. Doing world bosses is a great way of farming for materials. You can do each boss once per day per account, and they always drop a bonus chest that contains a rare or exotic piece of equipment that can be salvaged for globs of ectoplasm. The chest that's dropped by the boss itself also has the highest chance of containing a precursor weapon than any other chest in the game. So if you are thinking of trying to farm for your precursor weapon, then this is the way to go. There will always be a lot of players fighting the world bosses, meaning that the events will always be relatively easy and quick. Please note that your character has to be above level 40 to have a chance of receiving any rare gear from the event. The Fractals of the Mists is probably the most rewarding thing to do in Guild Wars 2. The issue here is that you need at least one character that is fully geared in Ascended gear and that has around 150 Agony resistance. And getting a character to this stage of being ready for Fractals is really difficult and can be very expensive. You should try to do the daily tier 4 Fractals every day. Dungeons are not nearly as rewarding as they used to be, but some of them are really easy and quick to do and the amount of gold gained for the amount of time that you spent in them is totally worth it. Lastly, remember to always do your dailies, as this will reward you with an extra 2 gold per day. To make the process of crafting this legendary as fun as possible while still saving some gold, I recommend that you do things in this order. The first 3 things that you should focus your attention on is the Gift of Exploration, the Gift of Battle and the Eel Statue. You can do them in any order you like, but I recommend first doing the Map Exploration while doing the daily PvP and World vs World achievements. This will reward you with potions that further the progress of your reward track in both PvP and World vs World, so make sure that you have the Gift of Battle reward track selected in World vs World and the Sorrows Embrace dungeon reward track selected in PvP. If you do things in this way then you should finish the Gift of Battle and the Eel Statue before finishing the Gift of Exploration. The reason that I like to focus on these three things first is because you will end up receiving a lot of materials that you can use later on in the Legendary such as Mystic Clovers, Obsidian Shards, Tier 6 Materials, and Globs of Ectoplasms from Salvaging Rare and Exotic Gear. 
When you are doing the gift of exploration, you should make sure that you have gathering tools equipped and that you gather every single resource node that you run past. The next thing that you should focus your attention on is the gift of fortune. Starting with the Mystic Clovis, as this recipe may also return some of the other tier 6 materials that's needed for the rest of the legendary. After doing the gift of fortune, you should finish the gift of mastery. Next, do the gift of Kratkin. Lastly, we've got the Venom. I usually place a buy order for a precursor when I start the process of creating a new legendary weapon, but a lot of other players will argue that it's better to do it at the end, so when you want to get the precursor, it's up to you. Thank you for watching this video. If you found this video helpful, then please give it a like and share it with your friends who may want to create this legendary weapon in the future. If you have any questions, then please feel free to ask them in the comment sections down below. And if you are interested in creating other legendary weapons, but you don't know how or where to get started, then consider subscribing to my channel as I will be bringing out more guides like this one in the near future.